Hello everybody, my name is Rebecca Grace from Rebecca Grace Designs and I am the creator of the Encyclopedia of Code, which provides hundreds of copy and paste code snippets for Squarespace website designers to use on their clients' websites. Today we are going to be looking at the very first thing I do when I am designing a client's Squarespace website. So first of all, one of the major differences between Squarespace 7.0 and 7.1 is the templates. So in 7.0, you had to be very specific and particular about which template you've used because different template families would have different options behind them. So if your client wanted a specific feature, you had to make sure the template you were using had the ability to have that feature. However, in 7.1, all of the templates are from the same family. So there's not an option in the background to even change between templates because there's no need. You can start with one template and by changing layouts and styles, get to another template. So choosing the template isn't as stressful or as important as it was in 7.0. So you can basically just choose whichever template you're comfortable with working with or whatever's closest to what your client is looking for. The only difference that I've noticed is one of the color themes will be set as a default color theme, and this can differ um, based on the template, but you can change this using the Squarespace app. So in the Squarespace app, you can go in and change which color theme is the default, which sets the background color of like your search pages and um, shopping cart page and things like that. Okay, so I'm just going to go through and choose a template. Again, it really doesn't matter. You're looking for whichever one's closest to what your client would like. I'm just going to choose this one. You can put in your client's site title. I'm just going to put mood board Squarespace 7.1 and close this. So the first thing that I'm going to do once I've gotten a template and I'm in is create a mood board. And this is part of my business process. So when I'm explaining my design process to my client, I make sure that I'm very consistent. I've set out specific steps that I take when designing a site. And I do that with every client. Not only does this help me with determining a timeline, it also makes sure that the client knows exactly what to expect when it comes to working with me, which can really help improve their experience. And one of the things that I like to do is get them to sign off on all of the colors and fonts that I'm going to be using in the site. I don't wanna be choosing the layout, going through doing all this layout, and then them say, actually, can we do this color or change this font? Um, because that means I have to go back through all of the pages and make sure that it works well in all of the layouts, and that can take a bit of time. So I'd rather them sign off on their colors and on their fonts um, before I start doing the layout. Obviously, if they want to change this later on, I'm not necessarily going to say no to that, um, but it has definitely decreased the amount of times of this happening. And if they've wanted to change anything, it's more like just changing the shade slightly or something like that and not completely changing to a different color. So what I'm going to do to create this is go to the not linked section and select a blank page and I'm just gonna call it mood board. And then in here, I'm gonna to click to edit, and I'm essentially gonna add all of the blocks that I think I'm probably going to be using on the site, or all of the main ones anyway. So I'm gonna add a blank section. And in the text box, I'm gonna put all of the heading and uh, font options. I personally like to center them and then I actually set them as their different heading options or paragraph options so that I can see what they all look like. I then like to add each of the buttons. So I'll set a small button medium button and a large button. 
I also like to do um, like a newsletter block and maybe a form block. I'll choose some of the different image blocks as well. So I'll just add, you know, a free option for now just so I can see it in play. If you have one of their images, you can use one of their main images. And I'm going to choose, let's say, a card block. I'm going to add a button. You know, just using, I'm just adding a bunch of the blocks that I think I'm going to be using throughout the site. You can always add to this later, but the idea is just to give them a, a good overview of what to expect on the site. And again, you can continue to add gallery blocks, their social links, any buttons in here um, that you're going to be using on the site. And then once you've included all of the different things that you're going to be using, I'll go into here and select colors and set it to the lightest one. And then I duplicate the section and set that section to a different color theme. Now the way I like to use these color themes, because to me this is too many options and it can be confusing for me, so for the most part, for my designs, I stick with all of the ones. So I'll do lightest one, light one, and then usually, actually I do the bright two, just because it has the, the accent color as its background color. Um, dark one and darkest one and then as I'm designing if I find that I have a section where I want it to be exactly like this section but maybe I want the buttons to be a different color or something um, maybe I'm using background images and I want it to be this theme except for one small color change then I'll set it to darkest two, which I'll set as the exact same style as, as darkest one, except for that one thing I want to change. So again, I generally only use the ones except for the bright. I usually use the bright two. And then I'll use the twos to change just one small thing about that style. Um, that's generally how I use the colors. And once you have all of your main colors set up, I just click save. And now I have one page where I can see all of the stylings and colors for this site. So I'll go into design, site styles, and I'll go through here and I'll set all my fonts, I'll set my colors, the animations, the spacings, the buttons, the image, I'll go through it all, set it all. And once I'm happy with it, then what I do is I go to pages, go to the mood board, and I'll set it as the home page. Right? Usually I'll delete all of these other pages because I don't use the demo pages. I just start from scratch. So usually I'll delete all the other pages, set the mood board as the home page, and go into settings, site availability, password protected, and put in a password. I'll give them the link here and the password and they can go through and look at all of the different colors and spacings and things that I've set up and give me the okay before I start doing the layout. Then generally once I've set a first draft of the layout, if they want to make any changes they can, but usually at this point it's just small tweaks in terms of colors and fonts and they're not having me make anything major, any major changes. Once they have done the okay, I generally set it back to private so that they can't go and peek as I'm going through and um, messing things around. And then I'll set it back to password protective when I'm ready for them to take another look. 
So the very first thing I do when working for a client is set up their mood board and get approval of their mood board before I move into everything else. If you like this tutorial, make sure you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, or if you're watching this on my blog, make sure to sign up for the freebie in the footer so you can be notified when another tutorial is posted.